Okay, but the actual editing system or app or software is, has to be on my system? No, this computer you are working on in Rendero is not in front of you, but it's in the cloud. This is a Cinity Gear News video. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from Cinity, and today together with me is Peter from Rendero. Peter, how are you? Hi guys, hi Johnny, I'm fine, thanks. Glad to be here. It's very nice to have you and you're offering a very interesting uh, service for filmmakers, for content creators and so on. But before we talk about the service itself, tell me a little bit about you. Who are you? Okay, so uh, before starting this uh, the, the, this company, before starting with Rendero, uh, I was uh, a filmmaker. I did, for the past 12 years, uh, I was doing uh, uh, commercials, uh, features, documentaries, TV series. Uh, I was mostly specialized in post-production. And during this phase, I've noticed that that there is something to be done here, right? That every project I was working on had the same kind of problems on the beginning, right? You, I always had to set the uh, workflow, right? The technical workflow for, for the stuff I was doing. And it always meant uh, codecs, compressions, files, storage systems, uh, workstations themselves, uh, and of course people. Right uh, and to 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 manage uh, uh, all of it uh, was necessary in every kind of project I was doing. So so obviously the issue is there, and usually the best ideas comes when you when you when you want to solve your own issue. So what was the solution for you for yourself? Okay, so uh, basically, I was uh, at the time I was doing a, pro a project in Los Angeles. It, it was a Second World War uh, feature mo movie, and all the footage was done in uh, in Poland. The the so VFX studio, which was uh, doing uh, effects for this movie, was based in Czech Republic. Uh, editor was uh, in Barbank, LA. Uh, director was also there. Producer was was here in Poland, and you know. I had to manage all this mess, right? So, uh, so uh, what I was I started to think about then is how to make all those people uh, uh, spread across the world uh, to work in a similar fashion as they would work in the same studio, and that was the spark. That was that was the first idea. So you created Renderer, and just in a few lines, what is this service? Okay, so Rendero is a cloud workplace for filmmakers, graphic designers, and animators. W what exactly is that? Rendero is your uh, virtual studio, so you don't need anything, any kind of uh, professional equipment in terms of post-production to start your, your work on a professional way. You just use Rendero for that. Okay, that means it's only about uploading stuff and download, downloading stuff, because this we have plenty of services like this. I, I guess you took it to the next level. In Render, you can create your uh, workstations on which you will uh, run any kind of software you want. So you can run Avid, you can run Adobe, you can run After Effects, uh, uh, Blender, DaVinci Resolve, just name it. You can run it on, on Rendero. So, uh, but you don't need to invest in your own equipment, in, in your own powerful computer, in, in your own storage uh, to, to do that. You just need your MacBook Air and, or Windows Surface and you are, you are free to go. You can compete with uh, the most powerful uh, uh, studios in this manner. So here is a real life scenario. Mm -hmm. We just completed testing the Black Magic. Uh, Mini Orsa Pro 12K. We do have a bit of an issue to play with the files. 12K, not so easy on our hardware. That means either downgrade, I mean the footage, or uh, invest in new hardware. How can render, render solve that type of issue? If you have this kind of files, and if you have this kind of project which forces you either to invest or to you know to to lower your expectations, uh, uh, you, then we have a solution for you. Uh, you. You have to just come back from your set. You, you've got your card with uh, with your 12k files. You have to send them into uh, into your personal cloud workplace in uh, in Rendero. So you have a drive there. Uh, you you upload your medias uh, there. This drive behaves as a NAS 
storage in our ecosystem. So every workstation or every user you assign to it will have access to, to those files. In the next step, you would create this workstation that would be capable of running this uh, this kind, uh, kind of files and just work uh, on, on your files without downgrading, without investing in your own uh, infrastructure. Okay, but the actual editing system or app or software is, has to be on my system? No, this is the major shift because everything runs in our ecosystem. So on the workstation, on your personal render workstation, which is in our infrastructure. So you've got access to it. You, you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, install any kind of software you want. You've got full privileges as an administrator of it. But this computer you are working on in Rendero is not in front of you, but it's in the cloud, right? So this is in our infrastructure. Okay, so as you said, it's really, I need to shift my mind into a, a kind of a different workflow. And that means that I literally can edit, let's say 12K on my 13 inch MacBook Air. Just, I don't need this power a laptop or computer with me anymore. That's what you're saying. Exactly, this is the thing. And you can, you know, you can uh, create as many, uh, as many computers uh, in Render as you want. Those computers can scale according to your needs. So if you are uh, creating, uh, let's say, simple, uh, uh, simple project with simple files that doesn't need a lot of uh, uh, of uh, computing power, you just you know choose our basic workstation to to work on it. If you want to scale up and you need to use those powerfuls, you you know we've got them. They they are easily uh, easily used in Rendero. And of course, the, you can work. Uh, on as many computers on the similar time as you want. Let's say that you finished part of your project. You you have finished your uh, your uh, video blog, right? So the first episode. But you have a materials for the next one. You just put render on one machine, turn on the other, and continue your, your working without waiting for the result. Very interesting. And what happened when I'm done with my project and you have all my files? in one place, um, and then what? I mean, do I have to uh, erase it all, or do I have, you have kind of a, let's say, backstage storage for them, or how does it work? We offer archiving solutions in Render. So let's say that you need to keep the files because there is a small chance that your client is going to come back to you and ask you for let's say next render or, or to switch some graphic, uh, gra graphics or text inside. We've got an archiving solution in our system. So you just select your drive and you uh, uh, mark it to be archived. We do a conversion, we call it a cold storage conversion. So we freeze those assets. It's much cheaper to, to archive it in this way. Does it matter if I'm a, a Windows user or a Mac OS user? We are virtualizing Windows workstations. So what you are finally working on uh, in Rendero is running on the Windows operating system. Uh, but you can connect to those workstations from any kind of system. So basically, we've got uh, application for Windows. We've got application uh, for, uh, for Mac. Uh, you can also connect it from Android devices. And the second question is, how fast uh, uh, is my internet connection has to be in order to actually communicate with your cloud system? We have to consider two cases. The first one is regular uh, workday. So, so whenever your media are in Rendero and you just connect it and, and, and to use this, uh, this uh, uh, cloud, uh, cloud uh, running uh, workstation, you need uh, we recommend to you to, uh, for you to have at least 50 megabits per one 4K monitor. You can connect multiple uh, monitors to, to, to render workstations. We support up to four 4K monitors. In this case, if you have four 4K monitors, uh, the, we recommend you to have at least 200 megabits of download. The second case is when you come back from your set and you have you've got this uh, those cards full of uh, media files that you want to have in our solution as fast as you can. Uh, then uh, of course your upload 
uh, uh, speed matters. So on, on those cases, whenever you want to upload big chunks of media to render, uh, you, you, you should use as fast internet connection as it's available for you. But this is only, only, only time, only point in which you have, uh, you have to have proper, decent internet access. Let me be completely transparent with you. And my issue with that type of service is only one, and that's the price. Because it sounds, really, it sounds amazing. I'm sure it's doable. I'm sure you tested it, and I hope that we can uh, test it soon too. But it's always about the pricing, because somehow in my mind, any service like this that has to do with storage or, or, or a capacity is still quite expensive. What are you doing in order to make it more easier for filmmakers in order to even consider it? Okay, so uh, at this time our uh, pricing uh, depends on the workstation that you that we are using in render. We are doing it in pay-as-you-go model, so we don't need any kind of long-term subscription. So that means that uh, you pay for render only when you're actively using it. Our workstations are built per hour. So, so, uh, so, uh, if you are not, uh, if you currently don't have any project, or you decided, you know, to to go away for a three months holidays, you don't pay a dollar in render if you don't need it. This pay as you go comes with uh, workstations. Our storage is built a little differently. So we've got this monthly uh, storage tiers. So. You, if you know that you're gonna actively use render uh, in in this month or the next month, you can buy those uh, the the specific amount of data which is gonna be available for you uh, during this time. But again, if you do, if you decide that you don't want to use it, you just freeze your assets, you 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 just uh, archive your your drives, and you are free to go. So, whom are you actually? targeting with this service? Broadcasters, production houses, or actually post-production houses, uh, independent filmmakers, whom would you want to see using this service mostly? This is extremely interesting for us that we uh, were developing a, a render, having a freelancer in mind uh, as a, our first target customer. So, so uh, this kind of person who who doesn't do it eight, uh, eight hours a day, five, uh, five, five days a week, but someone who really lives from project to project. But what happened in the uh, during uh, during the way when we were developing our solution? Uh, also, post production houses, medium, uh, small and medium ones, uh, approached us that seeing the, the volu value in our, our solution, uh, which allowed them you know, to cooperate with uh, creatives, to, to, uh, to outsource part of their work, to, to work with freelancers uh, on a regular basis. Uh, so they, they also saw that render was a perfect tool to, uh, uh, thanks to which they can achieve it easily. What we haven't expected at all uh, was that also uh, big companies uh, 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 started to, uh, to to have their interest in us. We were uh, talking with and conducting implementations with major broadcaster here in, here in Poland, uh, which uh, it, with which we are also developing uh, this uh, this solution. So so yeah. So basically, uh, if you ask me, who's Render for at the moment? It's, it's, it's for creatives. <laughs> so the idea sounds really very 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 nice, uh, very innovative. And just to get the overall picture, would you still consider yourself as a startup company or in what stage the company is right now? Definitely, we are, we are still a startup. So uh, the, the, right now the company is, uh, is employing uh, 11, uh, 11 people. We are really small, small at the moment. So we've, and we've got a lot of things to do, right? Uh, for, for, for we, we have a lot of things to scale up. Uh, uh, we've got a new market to, to conquer. There's currently only English version of Rendro and we need to create localizations. You know, the, uh, every new user, every new company that we are, uh, we are working on uh, have their own ideas to, for new features, uh, for things that they need uh, and, and believe also would be beneficial to other, uh, other entities that, uh, that, 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 that we need to develop. So, so definitely we are a startup and we're going to be startup for the next 
probably few few years but uh, let's not uh, let's uh, this shouldn't uh, discourage you in, in any way because the solution is already available globally so if you are a user from europe there is no problem either if you are english uh, german uh, french we've got an offer for you if you are based in us the same things apply so so yeah whenever we can uh, expose people like you and ideas like that and companies that try to take all our industry to the next level. It's really, it's always a pleasure for us. So before we say thank you and goodbye, anything that I missed in my questions or anything else that you would like to highlight? Uh, yeah, the, thank you for, for saying that. Uh, you know, we've got free trial in Renderer. So whenever you uh, want to explore our solution without uh, uh, committing to any additional costs, you can visit our webpage, register your account, and you will receive $10 for testing of our workstation and a one month of free storage. So, you know, you can upload your project, uh, uh, create workstations in Renderer, and test if the solution works for you. I strongly encourage you to do that. <laughs> Peter, thank you very much for spending the time with me. Thanks, guys. Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Mm -hmm.